yet another dumpster fire from inappropriate characters. Um, All right. So, well, were we going to talk about one other little thing? We should probably yeah, start yeah, winding yeah. down. Okay. So, last thing I I brought up, I wanted to bring onto this one was uh, that you see that um, that uh, you know there was this whole controversy about the the Marvel New Warriors uh, comic, and uh, they had these these new characters, uh, Safe Space and um, Trigger Warning, and um, Trailblazer, um, he's got, you know, Peggy yeah. uh, McIntosh's invisible backpack, apparently. And the, the, most, the, most, the most famous one was Safe Space. You know, that was just unbelievable. Yeah. But anyway, so that. Out. Oh, yeah, go when, ahead. Sorry, bud. When that comic came out. I pointed out that if, uh, you know, if um, Diversity in Comics had made a comic with those characters, they'd accuse them of a hate crime. Right, like <laughs> right. the exact same characters, right? But if oh they were God. written by someone who was, you know, who was clearly not a woke person, you'd look at this and you'd say, this is like a humiliating mockery and whatever, right? Like they would be totally insulted, right? Because yeah. the characters are absolutely absurd. You can't parody this shit, you know? It's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so there's there's this, uh, you know, whole, whole brouhaha online recently that the, the Marvel took down the page, uh, uh, the new page for New Warriors. So people were like, is it canceled? Apparently they pushed back the launch date on it. So um, I don't know. Let's, I'm gonna take it to the chat and see if anyone, has anyone well, read Martin anything Jack, about this? Part of that could have to do that with the fact that both Marvel and DC are in huge trouble right now because essentially the the lockdowns in your country have uh, have ended up making uh, their whole business model non viable right and they're 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 in a they're in a big big mess as far as the that, well the comics part of it anyways right but um yeah it, there are a lot of people questioning whether there's that that that's ever going to come back right because the the comic stores were already closing in droves during the best yeah. economy America has ever had, right? right? And then this lockdown happened and this complete economic collapse. These, the, there is there going to be a single gaming store left open? You know, and like is well, a bunch of them have been looted too. The looters yeah. have like busted them in and burned them down. A couple of them. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's crazy. I, it's crazy world. <laughs> Brian Harris in our in our comments says. Trailblazer ate the other new warriors, so they had to cancel the book. <laughs> oh my god. Oh now that is that is some mean fat shaming, Brian Harris. Huh? Totally inappropriate. <laughs> you came to the right channel. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I you have to wonder how much farther this uh the, the woke culture in popular media is really gonna be able to run after this and i've already made my predictions about that you know well, i think well what do you I'm think like, first yeah, i want to talk about that so uh yeah i mean I, I felt like it was winding down um uh especially with covid you know i read the news i i read like google news i, I read a bunch of news sites every day but you know it used to always be like i don't know there'd be some headline like i don't know the the gender pay gap is real and whatever the hell I, that's not a good example but you get you know what i'm talking about and you see these headlines every freaking day you know like you scroll through the news and like half of them would be some kind of woke framing on whatever the news of the day was and then COVID hit and then like all that stuff just started just disappeared there's like maybe one or two like um uh COVID is you know in in uh in proportionately, disproportionately affecting people of, uh, you know, black communities or something like that. When, it, when, it, okay. I mean, that's an interesting story to read, but you know, the framing of the whole thing, if you looked at it was, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, Oh, society can do better. And it's, you know, the fault of society and who the hell knows what the hell where COVID came from or, well, we, I guess we know where it came from, but I just, Whatever. I'm just sick of even talking about it anymore. I used to follow that stuff so much. 
Um, but but now with a you know after George Floyd and, and all these protests, it seems like it's come back like tenfold. What do you think? Well, here's what I think. I think that consistently over the last several years, but at an increasing speed, you've seen the SJWs uh, getting more pushback, and in response to that pushback, doubling down. But the problem is every time they double down, they increase their the intensity of what they're trying to do. They end up alienating more people. From the point of view of a corporate perspective, that means that every time they do that, they become less profitable, right? They become louder, but less successful at what they're doing. Um, and I think that this phenomenon is going to keep going. And what you're seeing right now is part of that, right? Like this is, um, like a lot of times we can end up mistaking uh, mo moments of, uh, what are actually the the crest of a wave starting to crash for like some kind of moment of, of glory where things are about to actually change, right? Like you see that, you saw that in the 1960s, right? Woodstock at the time, people that went to Woodstock, these hippies, you know, the last great leftist movement uh, thought that Woodstock was the, the moment everything would start happening, right? Like that was the peak that they had succeeded but it was actually the end, right? Like that was after that, everything just fell apart and, and the whole hippie movement kind of uh, dissolved, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and especially then after 72, after McGovern got his ass kicked by Nixon. And it's true that Nixon cheated, but it was very clear also that he, ne he didn't actually have to, you know? <laughs> if he hadn't cheated, he'd still have won, right? By a landslide. Um, and so I think what's gonna happen is that and, I, and I've been saying this for a while now, is that you're going to see more and more intense reactions by the SJW crowd all through 2020 until November. And unless he does, he really screws up, like you'd have to monumentally screw up here or he dies somehow, right? Which let's, let's hope not, right? Donald Trump's going to win in November, right? Like it would, it would take, it's going to take a really, really, Huge deal for him to lose. And then when he wins, you're going to see a couple of months of just absolute outrage. that will make the kind of hysteria that happened after he won the first time uh, look small by comparison. And then it'll be done. They're, 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 they'll have completely run out of gas. So that's okay. my prediction as far as how this is going to go. I don't know. I mean, like there'll, there'll still be SJWs causing trouble here and there, but nobody will pay attention to them anymore. No one will care. They're, yeah, they're already I mean, seeing. Sorry, go ahead. It could be, but I mean, at the same time, I kind of think that, um, I mean, we could see like a resurgence of uh, kind of like the protesting that's going on now when when Donald Trump is reelected, because I'm pretty sure he's going to be reelected. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, Joe Biden is not a viable candidate. The, you know, Democratic Party, which I've been a member of, you know, almost my whole life, basically, uh, is is a corrupt organization that, that you know if you think of I, I think of it you know like the republican party and democratic party as a machine that is like sorting um ideas basically up to the top and the machine you know what proved to me you know donald trump's election to me proved that the republican party's machinery is uh is actually working in uh, a fair way because none of the republican establishment party establishment wanted Donald Trump and they were like, well, yeah. this is what the votes say. Okay. On the democratic side, you know, in 2016, we saw uh, Bernie get, you know, screwed over by, by Hillary, <laughs> but it wasn't just Hillary. It's, it's the machinery of the democratic uh, party, the DNC. And yeah. it, and there was, there haven't been any reform since then. So it's, a, it's, it's a, uh, it's a broken and corrupt, machine for for political ideas and which is unfortunate you know i mean i i'm not really a huge trump fan but i don't i don't hate him either um, so you can I, you can feel free not to answer this but I, i'm gonna ask it right. uh did you vote for trump in 2016 and are you thinking of voting for trump in 2020 uh okay so bernie sanders was my guy in 2016 I considered voting for Trump, especially because I'm in Washington and Republicans never going to win here. And it was just, uh, you know, F you vote. Uh, 
But my girlfriend, who is now my wife, gave me a really hard time. So I ended up voting for Hillary. Because okay. again, well, like it Ben Jerry, you voted Hillary. Okay. Yeah, it, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. And now, it, not in what in Washington doesn't matter. Um, I don't know. I I haven't decided. I I I'm not going to vote for Biden. I'm either I'm going to sit out or I'll vote for Trump. I might vote for Trump. I really might. Interesting. Um, Very good. So, because I yeah, I mean, I'll I, just I, say whatever the fuck. I don't give a shit. I don't care what you think. Chat room. And has your wife uh, changed opinions? My wife? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. I probably shouldn't drag her into this. She'll be like canceled or something. Okay. That, yeah. Let's not do that then. <laughs> so, um, 